Hey guys, let me tell you about Santa Fe dehumidifiers. That's all they do. Crawl spaces, attics, wherever you need a dehumidifier, this is your company. Headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin, and US-based tech support. This is a great company. I really like these guys. I'm Jake Bruden with Aero Building in Columbia, Missouri and the Kansas City market. And today we are on one of our projects and we want to talk about this insulated concrete slab. Let's do it now. Okay, so if you remember our new Prairie Aero project, we've talked about how we have a turned down slab that is insulated on the top side. That allows for uh, our insulation control layer to be continuous, two layers of subfloor, and now we have a warm, soft feeling floor that will accept hardwood, and uh, we have a perimeter wall that bears all of the, the structure of the building, so we have no interior bearing walls except for those two, if you remember that. Uh, if not, go back and watch that. We published a video on that recently. Here, we have something slightly different. We have uh, our redo house, and this project has kind of a similar assembly, but it's different. So how is it different? So we have a traditional turndown slab altered. So we have that same trench footing. We're 18 inches wide. We're 32 inches deep. That gets us below frost line. That gets us actually two inches below the code minimum, which is 30 in our market in climate zone four. And then we have a little stem wall that is poured on top of that footing as the supporting perimeter for the building. Now there is bar uh, wet set in the um, footing that goes into this stem wall so it is continuous every two feet or three feet maybe uh, and then we have uh, wet set j bolts that are in this that will uh, be able to mount our uh, plate down to so we have all of our supporting structure there at this point we could do what our um, slab with slab house did we could go ahead and add aggregate and then just insulation and two layers of subfloor like we're doing at our new prairie arrow house or we could do what we're doing here. We are insulating, we're insulating on the flat, we're insulating on the vertical, and then we're gonna pour a raft in the middle of that of concrete. So why do that? Uh, number one, these clients wanted a concrete floor. They've seen the floor at our Spring Valley Aero project, uh, which you can find on Instagram. It's a polished, you know, quote unquote polished. It's not exactly a ground and polished floor. It's actually a sanded and then buffed floor. So it's actually a substantially more cost effective uh, way of doing that. And then, uh, so they wanted the, the concrete and then we wanted to be as cost effective as we could with that with while still maintaining uh, that, that thermal break. So what products are we using and why? Uh, if you remember from the uh, video a while back on the uh, New Prairie Aero. We are using a Halo Subterra product. Up there we are in Terra because we're inside the building. Here we're going to be ground contact and so we need Subterra as in subterrain. This is a GPS graphite polystyrene. Uh, it is uh, a little better for the environment than XPS. The blowing agent is uh, degrades the environment in a lesser fashion. And uh, therefore, because it loses less blowing agent as well, it maintains its R value longer. So we have less degradation in R value. Uh, it's more than the compressive strength that we need to support this slab. Uh, we'll have no issues with this. And we have something that's approved to be below grade. Uh, it is important to note here that we screwed up on ordering materials. And so while we're using the halo and the facer on it, as a vapor barrier, we should be using the manufacturer's supplied tape to get some sort of uh, guarantee from the manufacturer. We did not get that tape in time, and in order to move things forward, we made an alteration and we're using a Tyvek tape. I will say that that Tyvek tape sticks very well to the two, and because we're using it as a vapor control membrane, there is very little um, risk there in swapping out a tape. It's a choice that we made we understand the risk. We're okay with the risk. We don't think we'll ever have any sort of issue in this case. Uh, we've actually used that before because we didn't know that they made tape the first time. I'm fully admitting that we screwed up here, uh, but it, it will never be a noticeable difference in any way, shape, or form, so we're okay with an alternative. And in reality, we may have even saved a little bit of money going to another product. 
Uh, but it's not what we recommend. What we recommend is stick with the manufacturer, stick with what they say, do as they say, uh, instead of as we do, if you would. Uh, from there, we have pretty much a standard slab pour. We have a four inch on grade uh, slab with two foot on center bar. It's going to get protected during the process. We will chalk out lines on this with uh, baby powder after it's dry instead of blue or red or black. I know some of those are easily removable, but none are as easily removable as baby powder. We will also protect it as much as we physically can. It will probably get reimbored after we get through the framing process so that we don't have to scrape uh, plaster or drywall off of it. Uh, and it will just be something that we have to take care of. A couple of the things to note here before we move past this, uh, we do have a down set. You can see a two by six back here on top of a stem wall. That down set is for a patio door. So we're gonna change our elevation there a little bit in that stem wall to try to push things down a little bit to make that door closer to zero entry. It won't be exactly zero entry. We'll want a little barrier there, but not much. Uh, all the plumbing obviously is in. We still have one more piece of conduit that we have to get in so that we can have power into the kitchen island. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and verify the locations for all this plumbing before we go any further than this because we don't want to pour this slab and that's what we get paid to do is verify those uh those locations and make sure everything is correct um and so then once we've verified everything and we've signed off the uh concrete guys will come back and they'll place this concrete this is a standard pour we're going to have a 3500 psi uh, mix and they're going to try their best to keep it wet for as long as possible to let this thing really cure slowly and then uh, a week or two will go by and we will be here to pour a slab and so the two foundation or the two uh, details on this for insulation we have that subterra underneath the entire thing and then we have subterra on the vertical between that stem wall and that slab and now we have that raft on the inside that's completely uncoupled uh, with an r10 from anything outside from anything below grade uh, this project is a little more cost driven. If we had a little extra budget, we might have upped some of that insulation in one way or another. But we have a fairly mild climate, climate zone four, and we should be uh, optimal comfort here without too much extra cost from a heating and cooling standpoint. Uh, stay tuned for this house. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. You know, I mentioned that downset for that patio door. That's a 16 foot wide patio door in a 1700 square foot house. This thing has great little views of nature. We're going to do everything we can to not uh, not eliminate that or hinder that in any way. Stay tuned for more from the Redo Project. Follow the hashtag on Instagram. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. There is so much new content every week. That newsletter organizes it nicely so you don't miss it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to follow the Unbuild It podcast. That's Steve Basic, Peter Yost, and myself talking building business, our building of business and uh, building science on the Unbuild It podcast. And as always, thanks for watching.